Professor Eva Eichenschmidt, uh, who works as a professor of educational leadership at Tallinn University School of Educational Sciences. And Professor Eichenschmidt has been very active in development of teacher education policy in Estonia. For instance, preparing the implementation of the induction program for beginning teachers, teachers' competence framework and developing initial uh, teacher educational programs. But she has also worked as an expert evaluator of teacher education programs in different countries. So Professor Asian Smith will give us a short overview about Estonian perspectives related to the emergency remote, uh, remote education during the COVID pandemic. So without further ado, please, Professor Asian Smith, the floor is yours. Yeah, good morning. I was ready already like uh, one hour before. <laughs> so um, I'm really happy to present uh, very briefly on behalf of our research group what we found out during the uh, first pandemic wave. Uh, as um, everybody almost, we also carried out uh, uh, research uh, among our schools. And uh, uh, here are some, some results. Uh, generally, uh, we may say that uh, uh, Estonian uh, schools and teachers uh, coped well with the transition to the distance learning. Uh, but to find out uh, what could explain successful transition and uh, what were supporting factors, we used the resilience model to analyze uh, uh, particularly school leaders' data. Uh, so we looked from leaders' perspective how resilient uh, Estonian schools are. Although resilience are more used for a person, uh, psycholo uh, like a person psychological characteristics, but in nowadays more and more this is also used for organizational um, uh, as organizational characteristics and to understand how uh, flexib uh, flexibly and also how well actually organizations learn from turbulent uh, situations. So there are like uh, four elements. First, uh, uh, potential to uh, anticipate uh, basically how well they are prepared, knowing what to expect, when potential to respond uh, how flexibly and how they know what to do in uh, critical situations and also potential to monitor, uh, to know what to look for, to understand what is actually happening and what to do uh, best next. Uh, so the fourth element is potential to learn, knowing what has happened and, what, uh, and being able to learn from this uh, experience. So uh, first, what kind of early uh, teach, uh, uh, practices or, or, or uh, um, uh, teaching practices particularly predicted coping with um, this, uh, leadership during distance learning period because we looked at <laughs> a leadership perspective, we found that teachers earlier use of uh, digital learning materials and, and arrangement of independent learning days for students and collaboration with other teachers explained better coping and tra transition uh, to distance learning period. But also earlier routines and habits to use data which is very much in line with uh, our keynote presenter uh, for decision making uh, predicted also uh, coping with uh, leadership during distance uh, learning uh, period. So uh, leaders who responded or uh, reported that they used to use data for decision making to set uh, development goals for entire school and uh, teacher professional development also uh, felt that they coped better. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, exactly uh, uh, demonstrates or confirms that uh, our uh, school policy, uh, current school policy, actually uh, support uh, uh, schools uh, uh, 
behavior or, or respond to uncertain situations because all schools in Estonia I need to design their uh, development plans at least for fee, three years and this is uh, exactly school develop, uh, level activity uh, where all staff members should be included and also all schools need to carry out internal evaluation and it seems that we we really can benefit from this quite demanding work during uncertain and and turbulent times but next how well schools responded to the situation and how flexibly and and how they uh, uh, knew what to do uh, exactly joint discussions again and 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 collaboration with parents predicted coping with leadership uh, uh, in uh, in uncertain situations and also teachers uh, uh, discussions uh, uh, how to arrange learning process and to analyze uh, they analyzed the uh, feedback they collected from students and parents uh, and in, in addition, actually, finding from teachers' data also confirmed that these activities and teachers' autonomy uh, to apply different uh, teaching methods were crucial for successful uh, experience of a distance learning. And also collaboration between teachers, educational technologists and special educators was important for teachers to implement a variety of pedagogical methods and to support individual students. Teachers who collaborated with colleagues and parents more frequently applied also more diverse teaching practices in technology, use of technology, but also individual task-based teaching methods uh, and not only synchronous uh, video lessons but also differentiated learning and uh, use different students uh, uh, centered uh, project-based uh, teaching uh, strategies uh, and uh, again uh, joint discussions and habits to use data had impact uh, uh, for uh, for uh, future, uh, basically, uh, uh, how influential uh, was distance learning period uh, for teachers and and leaders to learn from this situation? They brought exactly out that uh, discussions. Uh, planning together, analyzing what is going on, and also uh, relying on data, not just discussing and uh, and uh, believing or uh, trusting gut feeling, but uh, collecting data and, and relying on evidence. So we can conclude that uh, collaboration and evidence are important in, in uh, uh, uncertain situations and somehow also preconditions uh, uh, to, to manage in, in critical situations. And this is something that we can uh, take with us and, and um, support our school development in future. So thank you for, from my side. Thank you very much, Professor Asian Schmidt, uh, for very interesting insights uh, from Estonia. Very fascinating to hear uh, that uh, the data uh, starts to play such a huge role uh, also during the pandemic uh, here. And uh, we, we see that this kind of positive data imaginaries are created within schools and, and the data-based governance is really, really uh, already uh, quite evident in, uh, in Estonian schools as well. So for all of those who have questions to Eva, I uh, ask you to write your questions in chat, because as I mentioned previously, we will go on with the presentations and then try to have a, like a wider discussion uh, based on these uh, five presentations at the, at the end of this uh, session. So thank you uh, once again, uh, Professor Asian Schmidt, uh, for your talk. And uh, we will now move on uh, to a, a next presentation. 
and we hear from perspectives uh, from uh, Finland. And Dr. Minna Lakkala, who works as a, a postdoctoral researcher at the Technology in Education Research Group at the University of Helsinki, will join us and uh, talk about the experiences from uh, Finland. And Dr. Lakala has a background in general psychology and computer science and extensive experience um, of consultation and teacher training in educational use of ICT for more than 30 years. So, uh, Dr. Lakala, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, and I will share my, my presentation. So my presentation includes some uh, recommendations uh, about digital practices for schools based, based on some Finnish experiences. I, I review uh, two studies shortly. Uh, first about the situation in Finland. So in Finland, schools worked remotely between the middle of March and middle of May, so not very long time actually. Uh, and upper secondary schools continued remote teaching in the autumn. Uh, in comprehensive schools, uh, individual teachers and students and classes worked remotely depending on the situation, but, but there was not so sort of major distance working period actually. Uh, uh, Finnish education evaluate Evaluation Center, who does various surveys about uh, schools and, and teaching and education, they made a survey for municipality representatives and principals and, and teachers last autumn. And uh, I picked from their study some, some good uh, practices that they, they picked from, from the survey based on the uh, COVID experiences. So. This, I think, happened maybe in every country that there was great improvement in, in both teachers and, and students' digital skills and abilities to use online tools especially. And these skills should be maintained also in the future, so not go back to, to <clears throat> earlier practices only. And one detail, interesting detail, what was that teachers... Uh, said that remote staff meetings uh, turned out to be very handy and they should be, because they increase possibilities to participate. Teachers are in different parts of schools and some are at home. So, so that is one concrete way of, of maintaining good practices based on the COVID experiences. Uh, then use of digital learning methods, especially sort of uh, digital learning platforms, uh, was turned out to be very useful, especially in upper secondary school, and this should be sort of continued. And also use of remote teaching for individualized learning and supporting self-regulation. And uh, very useful also was to use remote meetings for study support and, and counseling in, in special situations, also for, for younger students, when students need to be at home and, and, and things like that, also after the, the forced corona situation. Uh, then uh, some uh, researchers from the University of Tampere, Tanhua Piroinen and uh, her colleagues, uh, made a study for tutor teachers in Finland. There's actually quite interesting uh, tutor teacher model. Uh, it is not established yet, yet fully, but uh, the idea is to have a tutor teacher in every school who supports other teachers in pedagogical development and also in, in improving digital digital competencies and digital practices. And uh, Tanhua Pironen and her colleagues, they interviewed, uh, they made a survey uh, for the tutor teachers and they interviewed some coordinators. And here are some recommendations based on that study. Uh, 
So very important is to have organized digital and pedagogical support for schools, not just that there is some interested pilot teacher who helps others, but somehow systematically organized, like this tutor teacher model in Finland. And uh, it's important to have even distribution of resources in national level. Maybe this is very strongly emphasized because Finnish education system is so strongly based on, on equality. And this uh, uh, remote, uh, forced remote teaching situation sort of uh, revealed problems in this equality in these resources. And also important to have equal opportunities for all students to learn multiliteracy. Uh, it is uh, actually my great pleasure to introduce you to the next speaker because we will start to hear experiences from Norway. And it is my very great pleasure to invite Inkwil Vikings and Skogastad, who is uh, working as a teacher at the Knapskog School in Norway, to share her experiences. And um, also what I think is really important to add in this context is that Knapskog School is uh, fully digital, which means that they have one-on-one -on -one coverage with digital units and digital technologies, and these are primarily used for teaching. So please, Ingvill, do we look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. As uh, said, my name is Ingvill, and I'm a teacher, yeah, and it's a uh, school for uh, six, five, six to 12 years old people. And I'm going to talk about how the corona closure were at my school. Uh, in my school, first and second grade, there's have iPads and third to seventh graders have Chromebooks. So all our students have their own device. Uh, we focus on the educational classwork. So also before the corona situation, we uh, thought that the educational classwork must be in the driving seat. So the digital devices is a tool for us. It's not the, the target or the goal. It's, uh, we use them in our educational classwork in the best way we can find. Uh, we put the student in the center and we focus on the teacher to um, go from the sage on the stage to be the guide on the side. Uh, we want deep diving students, students that own their own uh, learning experience, and we want creative students. So this will, this is things that we worked with, we focused on before the corona closure. Uh, when the COVID uh, came, and we had the homeschool, remote learning. Uh, we uh, actually had a plan for homeschool uh, one day before. <laughs> so uh, we knew what to do when uh, the um, remote learning started. Uh, and when the remote learning started, the four to seven graders were already using Teams. So we didn't have to uh, find some new tools to keep contact with our students. We already had the tool. Uh, but <laughs> a week or two before the closure, the third graders uh, had uh, been given the Chromebooks for the first time. Before that, they had iPads, and so they haven't, didn't have anything. Uh, first to second graders uh, were using Shobi, and in the start of the corona, Shobi was only a writing, um, you can share thing writing, but you couldn't have uh, actual meetings. Uh, so uh, we used Teams, and we had the Teams installed in the homeschool period. And in the start, we actually just could install apps on the iPads on the school network. So we had the parents outside on the parking lot to um, uh, install the app. Uh, and the third graders, they just used what they um, could. So they used Hangouts or also the Google system. 
in the municipal in the plan we had we had to um, we had a daily or a weekly schedule so we didn't have uh, the, uh, the schedules at school but we made a schedule today or this week the students are going to this and then we checked on them uh, and the teachers from fourth to seventh grade they were in contact with the students daily both in class meetings and individually. Um, right now I have fourth grade and they were in second grade when this started. And for them, it was to be in a meeting and talk with the teachers and they were just quiet. It, they had to uh, have games to uh, meet, to interact. Uh, so, we found out that digital meeting is not the same as a classroom conversation. I really miss the dialogue. Uh, the pedagogy model we teach, it's like a dialogical uh, pedagogic model. So I really missed the dialogue. Um, and we also experienced that even we had the tools it was uh, difficult to ensure that everyone kept up. So actually when uh, uh, it were allowed to have some student at school, we also included some of the older students because in Norway, when the youngest student could come back to school uh, quite a lot of weeks before the older students, but we saw that some of the older students had to come back before because uh, we didn't get the dialogue. We, we was afraid that we were losing them. <laughs> so it was difficult to involve students who were at home alone. Students with parents were easy to uh, follow, but uh, the students that were alone was um, not that easy. Uh, we missed the close contact with students. We missed to see them and talk with them eye to eye, not talk to them in a screen. And we missed to do the fun stuff in class. Uh, we do a lot of coding. We do a lot of creative work with our hands. We tried to do that. Uh, I will show some pictures soon, but it wasn't the same. So, uh, and when we came back, we had the um, strict, uh, rules so we didn't we couldn't do the fun stuff then either you know, when we have to keep distance and we missed the social interaction but uh, maybe i'm fun part or our but the feedback the, uh, the students miss the feedback now when they're back to school because when they were at home the feedback was written uh, the teachers always gave feedback on the things they had done uh, and now we have to um, explain to our students that the oral feedback also is feedback. The digital feedback is also feedback. Uh, it, uh, feedback isn't only the thing that their teacher writes on the bottom on what they have done. Feedback is also when in a dialogue when the teacher say, oh, that was great, or maybe you can do that. Um, so we have used sometimes afterwards now to yeah, let them know that that's also feedback because the, uh, now they miss the feedback from the homeschool period. And here's a few pictures. The first picture is from uh, swimming uh, uh, teaching. Um, the fourth graders then um, went to the um, went to swim once a week and of course in the corona they couldn't go swimming. So then the teachers have their gloves and no the uh, glasses on and then have the swimming lesson on the floor. And the second picture is from um, baking. They were baking sweet buns at home and the teacher in the corner is showing in her kitchen how to bake. And uh, we had to have some of this fun stuff because uh, weekly schedule, daily schedule, they, it worked fine, 
but school is born boring <laughs> without activity. School is boring without the uh, dialogue. So I think we had we had the framework. We had we knew what to do. We had the tools, but we missed dialogue and we missed the practical things in and the social interacting. So that's. Uh, a little bit from uh, Knapskog School in Norway. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ingvild. These were very interesting examples you brought, especially uh, trying to t teach uh, swimming uh, remotely. Of course, not the easiest of solutions uh, for, for the teacher, but it seems that despite the hardships, everybody managed and will take a few pointers of how to move forward for sure. Thank you so much for your presentation. But we can now move on and hear about experiences from Georgia. And it's my honor to invite Professor Damar Siradze, who's a vice rector and professor of the Department of European Studies of Batumi Shota Rustavelli State University, and also a partner of the IHA project, uh, to uh, share their insights from Georgia's experiences. So please, Professor Siradze, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. It's nice to meet you all here and participate in this splendid webinar and make our contributions to the project. Uh, today, I will talk about the learning process during the COVID pandemic, problems, challenges, and solutions in Georgian educational system, more specifically in the Ajara region, which is in the western part of Georgia. Uh, I, uh, I have selected together with the with other members of the project the materials which we uh, had from the Ministry of Education and Culture and Sport of Ajara, as well as other universities throughout Georgia. Uh, in March 2020, in response to the threat of the spread of the coronavirus, due to the situation in the world in general, including Georgia, preventive measures uh, were taken by government agencies, which include the transition to distance learning and labor. In the first phase, the learning process was completely suspended until April 21, and then resumed online and learning continued through the Teams and Zoom platforms. So these were two platforms, but mostly schools uh, were using Teams platform for, for lessons. Distance learning has never been used in the Georgian education system before the pandemic. Consequently, the country was almost unprepared to meet the new reality. A number of problems have been revealed including the following more generic ones. And now I will enumerate most of the problems. Socially vulnerable families could not attend online lessons due to the lack of computers and internet. Uh, internet frequency was low in highland areas and villages of Ajara region, which was one of the hindering conditions for attending lessons. COVID pandemic has significantly reduced the number of students in private schools, thus making public schools more in demand. Difficulty of interaction between students and teachers, especially among first graders. And this problem, I think, goes in line with the problems uh, of the previous speaker, Ingvild, if I'm not, mis not mistaken, just mentioned that they missed the dialogue and we do agree with this problem as well. And this is what we included here is our problems as well. So difficulty of interaction between teachers and students. Uh, the problem of involving and attending classes with hyperactive students or students with special needs and less involvement of parents in the online learning process due to the, their employment, business, or lack of digital te technology skills because parents are less developed maybe in technologies 
rather than their children. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Georgian government provided a variety of social assistance programs. Now I turn to the kind of solutions which we were trying to um, catch up with the problems, uh, including utility subsidies, restructuring of bank loans, etc., etc. But it should be noted that one of the best practices is the prompt response from the public broadcasting television of Georgia and creation of the TV school, the so-called TV school. Uh, it, it means that um, during a week, specific timetables have been arranged like schools. It was kind of simulation of schools. And uh, school children could attend appropriate lessons during the week on TV, and it was done actually brilliantly, we can say today. It has been so successful that still continues even after schooling has turned back to the face-to-face -face learning. The social assistance which was used to improve the education service included the following programs. Uh, one time 200 Georgian jail social assistance to children. Learning materials for students, they were distributed free of charge. Preferential internet packages, we tried to improve the internet ex uh, access for the families and general internet access and quality improvement. Uh, public procurement in the education system. As you know, the public procurement is connected with quite a lot of bureaucratic process and procedure. So this time government uh, tried to uh, facilitate the process somehow and allow public schools to conduct procurement without any specific procedures. A tablet transfer program was launched for locally valuable for socially vulnerable families. COVID pandemic and the challenges of distance learning have shown that despite the existing problems, the rate of school leaving and enrollment in high educational institutions was quite high. And still we had um, as many students becoming the students high educate, of higher educational institutions as before. Uh, at this stage, Face-to-face -face teaching is underway in all schools of Georgia. As for the universities, most have renewed the new academic year in a hybrid format, which means conducting lectures online while the practical part is on site. I did not mention in details the developments at the universities, uh, but I, I would like to mention here that unlike schools, universities were more or less prepared for the pandemic situation because uh, prior to the pandemic situation, most of the universities in Georgia tried and managed to prepare uh, platforms uh, for the transfer of educational systems into electronic management. That is why they were more or less prepared uh, to transfer uh, this uh, all the teaching process onto the electronic platform without any problems. Uh, the Ministry of Education, Culture and Sports of Ajara has set up monitoring focus groups, which check the progress of the educational process on a daily basis and uh, issue recommendations in case of problems. Uh, actually, this is uh, all in brief about the main situation, general situation of educational system uh, in Georgia. But my answer to the title question of the webinar if COVID-19 is a catalyst for educational change is, yes, it is. It accelerated the process of utilizing all the benefits of digital technologies. And I do think and hope that uh, our project, I have for schools, can serve uh, as another catalyst uh, because all the benefits which is offered by this program I think will be very helpful for schools in Georgia to be more um, in collaboration with each other and not conduct everything only closely independently without any contacts to each other. Thank you for attention. This is.
what I wanted to talk about today. Thank you so Ready much. Ready for answer the questions. Thank you so much, Professor Sirata. It was very fascinating to hear how different digital divides uh, were overcome, actually, and with a very fascinating and creative solution with TV schools. I think this is something that many countries can learn from, actually. And, and uh, yeah, I hope we have uh, more opportunities to discuss uh, on the topic uh, after the final presentation in this round. So uh, once again, thank you so much for your presentation. And the final uh, speaker for this slot uh, will come from uh, Lithuania. So it is my great pleasure to invite Vaidas Patsis, who is also the principal of the Duboa School in Shaolai district, and also a former vice minister of education and science in Lithuania to share actually Lithuanian experiences. So please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone from Cloudy, Lithuania. I'm instead of, instead of Vaidas, because things happen and he couldn't join us today. But uh, this presentation we prepared together, so I'm going to, to share uh, the things about how we survived the COVID situation and distant learning in Lithuania. So the COVID pandemic has had a major impact on the education and training systems. In Lithuania, excluding the uh, non-compulsory part of the curriculum, each week of school closures represents about 22 hours of face-to-face -face compulsory instruction time at school. That is to say 2.7% of annual compul compulsory time, instruction time. Schools were forced to replace this time in class with online learning and homeschooling, in most cases facilitated by teachers and parents. From the 1st of September 2021, with the start of the new school year, the Lithuanian government has de decreed in accordance with the recommendations of Ministry of Education, Science and Sport, that the educational process for pupil who is unable to attend class due to isolation shall be continued in a hybrid, blended or distant mode, except when the pupil is ill. Uh, if the pupil is ill, the educational process shall not be organized for him or her. Hybrid education is organized when the school or classroom has the appropriate equipment and if few pupils in the class are in isolation rather than the whole class. With a small number of pupils in isolation, hybrid teaching, teaching can also be organized by providing video tutorials for pupils and assigning uh, independent tasks. At the time we started the distance learning, teachers were ready to use online modules, so learning materials available on the internet and learning, learning management systems like Teams and Modo, Canvas, Google Classroom, and Zoom as means uh, of offline, online and distance learning education. The school has provided all supplementary materials and equipment for distance learning. Of course, we face some challenges. Distance learning in the face of COVID-19 has received a lot of attention and it uh, is leading to, to an increased workload for educators. In our school, we face some channel challenges like uh, our knowledge and skills required in delivering list, uh, distance learning educational classes, challenges on having stable internet access intended for, for distance learning education, Channel challenges on use of phones, laptops, tablets, or any devices for distance learning education, challenges on time management in conduct of classes, monitoring on re responses, availability of students, and other online issues. In Lithuania, the beginning of distance education highlighted the lack of teachers' experience in working, in working with information technologies lack of computer equipment and tool and technical problems of distant education. Teachers, especially senior teachers, are also face, also face difficulties in manage, managing information technology, including tools for distant education. 
the teachers with more number of, uh, of teaching experience, number of years of teaching experience needed more assistance uh, in using with online tools to deliver their lessons. By 2021, more than 2,000 educators are planning to leave their job due to dramatic changes in their workload and the difficulty of adapt, uh, adapting to distant and ever-changing teaching styles. What concerns about hybrid, uh, hybrid learning? Uh, hybrid, le hybrid learning is a challenge in Lithuanian schools. Uh, uh, there is a need for hybrid teaching, with a, which is cur uh, currently considered a challenge in Lithuanian schools for the following reasons, like lack of equipment, lack of adapted classrooms, and the need to improve teachers' competences in hybrid learning. On the other hand, the specificities of hybrid teaching can open new opportunities for education. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, many people lacked digital literacy skills, but now these skills have been developed, which is a major achievement in the age of artificial intelligence and uh, automation. Distant learning and hybrid learning can open up many more possibilities like we can record, record a lesson or lecture. We can monitor learners' pro progress. It is now important to find solutions uh, for the use of hybrid learning in different disciplines, in different educational institutions, and for individuals of different maturity and socioeconomic levels. The National Agency uh, of Education has purchased more than 1,800 mobile video recorders at a cost of 2 million and will distribute them to Lithuanian schools. Of course, the distant learning uh, gave us more opportunities. We discovered lots of new things. School closures have forced many schools to film outside the box and come up with innovative and pragmatic solutions in order to deliver teaching and ensure learning can happen remotely. The COVID-19 situation has prompted teachers to rethink the educational process, to digitize tasks where possible, to look for new ways to work with students remotely and to involve every child. The school has created her own system of information dissemination to communicate with the parents and the learning, learners during the COVID-19 outbreak. Furthermore, teachers have had the opportunity to attend seminars, workshops needed in offering distant learning education. This encouraged teachers to think outside the box. The COVID-19 situation has also led to the search for new forms of communication and the development of professional networks among teachers. For example, when the COVID-19 pandemic started and the schools in Lithuania were closed, many Lithuanian publishing houses, cultural institutions, libraries, museums open, opened up their educational resources for teachers to use so we could find the new forms of communication uh, to gain new experiences. And um, it's open for us new professional networks. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Rita, for taking the stand and, and uh, telling us more about Lithuanian experiences.